In today's lesson, we're going to talk about or discuss the tests for parallelograms. What we're actually saying here is what characteristics are present in a quadrilateral that make it into a parallelogram. In the previous lesson, we learned if we knew it was a parallelogram, certain relationships exist. Now what we're going to learn is if we have some situations or properties existing, then we know that the object's a parallelogram. What we learned yesterday is that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. So here we have, if, quadrilater if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. The converse of that would say, if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it is a parallelogram. And this is a true statement. When the opposite sides are congruent, we do have a parallelogram. Our next statement we learned was the opposite angles are congruent in all parallelograms. The converse of this would be if the opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it is a parallelogram. This is also true. So our first two characteristics of parallelograms that state when, the, when it is a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent, is also true for the converse, saying, if I have a quadrilateral in which the opposite sides are congruent or the opposite angles are congruent, then I have a parallelogram. So having opposite angles congruent is enough to say, yes, it is a parallelogram. Consecutive angles are supplementary. This is also true. When you have two angles consecutive, so x and 180 minus x, or x and 180 minus x this way, that is enough to state that you have a parallelogram. So if any two consecutive angles are equal to 180, you do have a parallelogram. Diagonals bisect each other. This is also true. If you have diagonals that bisect each other, you have a parallelogram. So if we knew that we had a 6 and a 6 and an 8 and an 8, that would be enough to say, yes, indeed, we definitely have a parallelogram. Each diagonal cuts the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. This is also a true, a true statement for the converse. If a diagonal cuts a quadrilateral into two congruent triangles, then it is a parallelogram. Because if this triangle here, I'll call it A, is congruent to triangle B, then these two sides have to be congruent, and these two sides have to be congruent. And of course, we have the reflexive side. So there we have opposite sides congruent, which we know does indeed make a parallelogram. True or false? If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both parallel and congruent, then it is a parallelogram. So look at the picture here. We have the purple congruency mark there, which matches up to there, and we have the parallel down here and the parallel up here. Although it's only on the one side of the shape, that is actually enough to state that yes, this is a parallelogram. So one pair of sides and that same set of sides being congruent will be enough to say that it is indeed a parallelogram. So that is a true statement. Lastly, here's a question. If a quadrilateral with the following vertices 
is it a parallelogram? We have a couple of different ways we could go about figuring this out. We could actually check the slopes to see if the sides are parallel. We could check the sides to see if they have the same distances. Or we could do a combination of both. Well, I'm going to first draw or sketch what this picture would look like. So here's our picture. Now I'll draw in our quadrilateral. My picture is not perfect, but we really don't need a perfect picture for what we're doing. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just pick one side or one pair of sides and we're going to use this last reason or this last theorem, theorem that we have here that says opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. I'm going to check this side right up here. I'm going to check it to find its slope and its distance. The reason I want slope is then if the other side down on the bottom, down here, has the same slope, then I know my sides are parallel. I will also get distance to check if the distance of these two are the same. So remember to do slope, I take y minus y over x minus x. Checking this out, I have 1 over negative 4. Now as I look at it, my line is definitely going towards the left direction, so that seems okay. Let's check the bottom line right away at the same time. I'll do negative 1 minus 0 over 1 minus minus 3. That gives me negative 1 over 4. These two fractions are equivalent, so so far we know that these lines are parallel. Now if I wanted to, I could just go right away and check to see if the other two sides are parallel to each other. That'd be one way of doing it, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to actually check distance. So what I'll do for that, I'll go back to my top side of my figure. So again, I'll put a one line up there, and that's the one I'm going to check. So I've got to do distance formula. Distance formula is x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. So what we'll get here is negative 4 squared plus 1 squared, which would be 17. No reason to get the decimal for that because we're just trying to check the distance out so I can just see if the other one has the same distance. So now I'll do the bottom side. I just put a green line on that one. So I start with the x's. Negative 3 minus 1 squared plus 0 minus negative 1 squared. Again, I get negative 4 squared plus 1 squared, which would be the square root of 17. So what I've found is that I have a pair of sides that are both parallel and congruent. So I now have enough information to say, yes, this is a parallelogram. This might be a little bit confusing, so make sure you took very good notes on this last question because there's going to be some of those that are going to come up on your homework. Feel free to come to class and ask me any questions you have about how this problem is done.